Well, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Corona isolation. <laughs> <laughs> this is my isolation partner, Marie. Um, and we're going to be talking today about doing, basically making some bowls at home. Um, we're going to go through a different few methods. She's going to be working on some stuff while I'm explaining things, and maybe she'll explain some things while I'm working on stuff. Um, basically, we're going to show you a bunch of techniques today, and you can use whatever you want, okay? You don't have to do what we're showing you. Um, you can do things differently than we're doing them. That's fine. Um, so just know that um, we understand that you probably don't have a slab roller at your house, um, that you your, your parents might be a little <laughs> concerned about, about you having uh, clay in, in your house. So I get it. All right. So we're going to try to do this um, as, as um, hassle-free as possible. Okay. So first thing, you took home 12 pounds worth of clay, that big block of clay that's like 12 pounds. Um, I'm going to ask you to start out with... Um, like making some pinch pots or or using the technique to um, make an easy pinch pot um and so with that it can be there's really no real size requirement um we can go as big as small whatever um i try not to do like dinky ones but you know a normal bowl um and then you know interestingly enough i'm going to try to get these fired and i know that things are really strange but we're, we're going to try to get it done for you, okay? Um, I don't know about the glazing part, but maybe we'll have to paint them. I don't know. Um, so anyway, let's start it off uh, with this. Find a surface that's okay with mom and dad that you can work on. Uh, we're down here in my studio, um, Maria and I studio, and um, so we have, we're actually working on a, a slab roller. You can see a portion of it over there, but it's just a big table that we have. So if you're working on the dinner table, make sure you're using um, news, newspaper, you know, lay it out. Uh, and it's, it's a pain, I get it, uh, but just lay it out so that you're not getting mud or clay everywhere. Uh, we have a canvas, um, and that's what we're working on. But if, if you use a paper, <coughs> ah, the virus! Um, um, if we're, if you're working on just regular table, remember it's gonna, it's gonna stick and we don't want that. So work on newspaper or some kind of non-porous surface, um, that kind of thing. So we're going to start out easy. Uh, I've got about a pound and a half of clay here. I've cut myself a string. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. And my pinch pot's going to be a little smaller than that. So I'm using a string as a cutoff wire. Uh, I'm going to use this. So I'm going to start this off really simple by just making a ball. All right, simple ball. Uh, it doesn't have to be super duper smooth. Um, uh, you just stick in your thumb, not all the way through, but a, a fair amount. And then you just start working your way around, squeezing the clay between your thumb and your fingers. Okay, la, 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 like that, all right? Is that how you explain stuff at school to them? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad to know that your personality doesn't change between home and work. Not really. <laughs> Not really. I'm a big idiot there, too. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay, so I have a bowl. See, that's, that's, that's pretty simple. It's a little thick, so I'm going to keep working it. Keep working on it. I might use two hands. Even two hands. I know, right? All right. So working that around, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it, work it. And I'm gonna pay really close attention to the thicknesses of the of the wall. I want them to be uniform. I don't want super duper thick spots. Um, I use my fingers here to just kind of hook them back up a little bit. When when I do pinch pots like this, I think of the Japanese. I think of uh, traditional Eastern pots um, that might be a rice bowl or something like that. So something that you're going to be holding in your hand. 
uh, maybe something that might have some sauce in it, or what else could we do? Maybe sitting beside your stove for like salt and pepper, you know, kind of stuff. That would kind of be kind of cool. Um, if you had a really tall hamster, they could use it as a <laughs> water dish. I don't know. I don't know. An old man dog could probably use it as a water dish. That's true. Okay. Well, while I'm working on this, I'm going to keep refining it. Uh, I think that's... Marie, what are you working on there? What do you got going on? I am doing a coil bowl. So it's what I had started out with. So you're going to have to go through your parents' uh, probably kitchen. Maybe maybe get their permission yeah. <laughs> before you start using their stuff. <laughs> and after you use it, you really should be nice and clean it all up. Don't leave it for your mom to clean up because you know, Mr. Bowling might get emails after that. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your job, your mess, your cleanup. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went and found just a normal mixing bowl that we use in our kitchen. And I took saran wrap right here and I just tear off a piece and I wrapped it on the back side of the bowl. Well, why'd you use saran wrap? Why did I use saran yeah, like, wrap? Yeah, what is the purpose of using oh, saran so wrap? You just build it right on the bowl. Well, if you're going to build it on the bowl, it's not coming off the bowl. Why? Because. Because! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, as it dries, you'll need to be able to take it off of the bowl because clay shrinks and then it cracks and then all your hard work is not going to be fired because would be a hot mess mm -hmm. but also it but sticks to the bowl because oh you are so testy Did i you know see right? This? all right all right it sticks because it's a non-porous <laughs> surface okay Sorry. well depending on what bowl you're using that's true i mean if it was a wooden mixing bowl or something like that you could totally get away with that but i wouldn't put it back in the kitchen a wooden one because it's all full of clay and goobers and stuff so Totally get the permission for that one. Yep. Go ahead. Or still wrap it Stop in, the, in the plastic <laughs> wrap. <laughs> you done yet? No. Oh, oh. No, because you're interrupting. I'm going to put you in the timeout <laughs> on the board. Oh. Okay, so all of a sudden. being homeschooled, can I be expelled? <laughs> um, no. We need to do chores yet. <laughs> Damn. All, right. All right, so I just took a piece of clay off of the clays that you were given, and I just start rolling it in my hands to make a coil. Once it gets so long, you just roll it. Granted, you're going to have newspaper, don't forget that. And you're just going to roll it out. And you're going to try and make all your coils pretty much the same thickness. So you want to do a bunch of coils first, or do you want to do like one coil at a time? No, a bunch at first. Yeah, okay. But only if you know you're going to use all of them so they don't dry out. So if they, if you do have a bunch, you could put them in like plastic, plastic. wrap themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So that they, they're not going to get yep. dry as fast. So you can use your parents' freezer bags or just use the plastic wrap that you've already ganked out of the kitchen. Um, <laughs> ganked? You ganked it out of the kitchen? Ganked it. You stole it and you're not giving it back. <laughs> okay. There it is. Word of the day, boys and girls. Okay. <laughs> um, so now I have, and I made a bunch of different lengths because some of my circles are bigger than others just on my preference you can do it however you want it's part of the nice factor of the coil bowls you're going to make them like a worm and then you just start rolling starting at one end and rolling them in a circle um every, once again everybody does this different you can do it up in the air i find it a little easier just to kind of lay it on the table and roll it you want to kind of push them together so that they still stick. And as you do this, 
Sometimes you'll notice that it's uneven and you just give it a little pinch to make it stay all the same thickness. And then once you get your coil all rolled up, you bring your bowl over and try and remember since Mr. Boland's going to try and get these fired, it's so weird to call you that. Um, you don't want to have any gaps between where each coil is touching one another. So where you'll have you know, your cereal and milk will go through them. <clears throat> is it okay if they want, like this, this could be a non-functional bowl, right? It could. So is it okay if they want to put holes and stuff in there that they could? Depending on what your assignment is, yes. The assignment is, to, uh, the assignment is to just make four bowls. How many? Four. Four. Okay, by uh, Monday the 6th. So we got the rest of this week, uh, spring break, and then the whole next week. I was like, wait, you're going to make them work on spring break? No. Why you touch my rule? A mean one, but <laughs> I'm not. So, and then after that, then we're going to go on to another project, okay? Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, and maybe you'll see the dynamic duo here working on it, and then you want from that. So remember, it's just four bowls. If you want to make more, you can. If you want to, like, there's no real size requirement. So if you want to make a big one, like what Marie's working on here, if you want to make a little teeny tiny one, like what I've got here, um, you you are welcome to do that. Okay. Um, the requirements are, as always, just like on this on the cylinders and the cups that we were working on, uh, the requirements are surface development. Okay. I'm not worried about size or anything like that. Surface development. So she has a pattern. Marie has a pattern, a pattern of coils, right? Yeah, uh, circles and squares. You Yeah, you can make squares. You can make squares. See, look at that. Oh, you made a square. square. Cool, all right. What about triangles? You can make triangles. You can make triangles. Okay. Okay. Sure. That well, I don't have one yet. You don't have a triangle? No, I don't. <clears throat> Could could somebody just uh, lay a coil like? Could they just go like this, and, oh, and, and go around and kind of thing like that? Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Um, I notice that you're not using any water or anything like that. No. Um, is it okay that you're not using water? Yes, because right now my clay is all the same texture. So the same wetness. Same wetness. Okay. Okay, yeah. So if you work fast, you don't necessarily have to add water. water. But you yeah. could add water if you wanted to. Yes. Okay. Eventually, as I'm working, because it's going to take me a little while to make all these coils to keep going, I am going to have to start adding water because my clay has been sitting out. Okay. So what I've done is while, while we were all listening to Marie, I rolled a little coil myself and I put it on the bottom of my bowl giving it a foot. A foot. A foot says. Okay. Yep. And then I'm just gonna tap it like this and kind of level the foot out. Okay. So did I've you got, add water? I did add water, yep. I used a little bit of water and a little paintbrush here that I got. What if they don't have a paintbrush at their house, which you know they're artists, so we kinda should. But Well, if they don't, you could use your finger. A finger? With water. Or that. a Q-tip? You could use a Q-tip. Q-tips are good. Cotton, Cotton balls. balls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe. You'd have to. You probably can do that. Cotton ball. Uh, your, uh, the tail of your shirt? <laughs> no, no, maybe not that. I mean, you could. You could. <laughs> but there are so many of them. <laughs> There's better ways. <laughs> By the way, on the table here, too, we have a whole bunch of stuff that I just... Uh, I, I went and I, I stole the cheese slicer, honey, out of, oh. the, out of the kitchen. Um, I didn't ask. I didn't ask first. No, I, didn't, didn't. I, I didn't ask. So uh, I should probably uh, clean that up then before I put it back. But yes. I have a cheese slicer, right? And it has a nice little wire on it. And I use that to cut. But I, this one comes apart. So I just simply took this off. Uh, make sure if you do take your stuff apart that you save all the pieces. Otherwise, you'll be grounded forever. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, so I have this. What you brought this down? A den. A, a, is it a scraper? This scraper. 
Well, it's, it's not a, a spatula, is it? Well, it's a type of spatula, oh. but it's for like baking cakes, and so you can. But it is a type of scraper. Okay, you, like, you scrape, scrape out the, your bowl. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and then you get to look. Oh, and look, this one looks like it's got play on. It does. Uh, this one here too. This yep. is kind of Same a scraper thing. Here, scraper thing. Uh, what the heck is that? Oh. So, oh, that's an old lady net. <laughs> that is not a hair net. Oh. <laughs> it did have oranges in it. Oh, okay, yeah. That's kind of cool. It's, oh, and it's, yeah, you can kind of change your pattern and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool. So I suppose we could press that in there. Yep. In there. You just use your finger, or do we have to use a special tool? Well, you can use several different things. You can use your finger. Um, if your parents have old credit cards or anything, or like these are old hotel cards, um, and you can just. <laughs> How did you I'm not ask? Um, actually, one of your adult students um, brought some to me so that I could actually punch holes in it because oh. I wanted little pointy textures. Okay. Um, this is what I got here. I got this thing in there, and I'm gonna. Oh. You did not press hard enough. I guess I didn't, did I? That's no. like so there's some there, but not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, that, <laughs> but you could use the spatula to smear it around too. Um, by the way, here's my triangle. Ooh, nice so we, yeah. we made triangles. Okay. I'm gonna poke them on there. But one of the other things about the coil pots is so I'm gonna have all this design when I take it off the bowl inside, but with all these spatulas. We can also get rid of the coil lines on the outside by just smearing it around and then compressing it. Compressing the surface? Mm -hmm. So you can press it to get rid of it. Compress it, you don't depress it? Mm -hmm. Whichever one. <laughs> but I don't know what stage your kids have learned in Pottery Fest so much right now, so... Alright, well just act like they already know it. Oh, so... Or act guys, like they don't know it. Like, act like I don't know it, but they do. Sometimes that might be realistic. <laughs> right. So you can use your spatulas like a rib um, from class. To compress everything together and get and make it all smooth, and so if you want to do that on the whole outside of your pot or your bowl, you're making a pot. I'm making a bowl. Oh, I'm making a bowl too. A pot and a but bowl. But they're whole. They're pots. They're pots. They're pots. Okay. But other kitchen things you can use to put texture on them. We have so once you get it all ribbed flat. You can use your forks, ask forks. your parents to crisscross lines or scratch lines in. Ooh, you could do... I don't know if you can see that. How far away is the camera? Oh, I feel like it's really good. far away. Far I like away. that. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. So, if you don't know, we've got a little monitor set up right below our camera. So, if we're not looking directly at you, we're looking at the camera to see what you see. Hey, I've got this one too. This one now, now probably I, I don't know if you can make one of these. I mean, you really gotta make sure you ask permission. But <laughs> this is part of an old broom, <laughs> you know, like the, the the whiskey brooms or whatever. Um, and I took some zip ties from the garage and I I took a bunch of of the broom stuff and I I just zip tied it together and then I cut it. And I made I made these. These are these are like little uh, texture brushes. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna do some on this one because this is one. This one is kind of Japanese, um, Japanese style. So what they do is they take they kind of take this and just scrape through like that. Um, in in a what they would probably do first, though, is they would use some underglaze. Remember, we talked about underglaze when we were uh, in the glazing area. Um, and they would put some underglaze down first and then let it dry slightly and then use this as a texture to go through. Uh, through the underglaze. Oops, sorry. Um, 
So, let's see, can you see that? Some, some interesting texture that's on there. Um, remember, this is just, we're just kind of playing around and experimenting here. If you want to, you know, I don't know, I think a smart person would just take a bit of clay and just play with it to start with to see what looks right. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't know, I'm kind of happy with that and I'm kind of not. Maybe I'll add something to it. You're still adding stuff to that? I am. Okay. These kind of look like, they really kind of look like grass. Like out in the like out in the field. So what if I what if I use a pencil? I've got a pencil. You've seen a pencil before, right? <laughs> um, what if I what if I make them kind of like wheat? So I take my time here and I I just start to add some super duper minimal texture. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, something like that. And I can add uh, just using the tip of my pencil. What do you think, Marie? Does that look like wheat? It does look like wheat. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna bring it to you. Can you see it? Ooh. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> yep. Okay. I can see it. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna put this one aside. And. Uh, okay. What's next on your plan? Okay. You're gonna be working on that one for a while. <coughs> <coughs> I'm gonna work on. We found some of these. Look at we go to the Goodwills, uh, and we find these things. Uh, this one isn't a bad uh, form. I mean, it's kind of interesting uh, to use. We could maybe lay clay inside. This one would not be such a good one for the outside because, if you can see, it has this little foot ring already on there. And if I were to lay clay over the top, and I'm gonna just demonstrate by using uh, this thing right here. I'm going to lay clay over the top of it. If I pull that off, it's going to leave a big mark on the inside, right? Because it's an outside, it becomes the inside. Right. Of the bowl. Um, so not not such a good thing for the outside. Although um, I think this is one that we found at the Goodwills as well. Um, and I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I took our grinder <laughs> and, I, and it had a foot ring on it. I just ground it off. So it was kind of flat. Uh, so that's 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 an option. Um, remember, you don't have to necessarily use the outside. This is a small mixing bowl. Um, here's another like regular bowl. This is from our camper. This is our camping bowls. Uh, it has a foot ring on the back side as well. If you can see, there you go. Um, so that's not a good one to use for the outs to, to lay over the top. But we could lay some coils on the inside, right? We yep. can put uh, we can put saran wrap in there and, and do that. Um, and a lot of times doing the inside is a lot safer uh, of a process because the the clay shrinks, right? So if we're on here and the clay is shrinking and we don't catch it in time and get it off of there, um, you're likely to crack because of the tension. But if it's on the inside of something and you put the clay in there and it shrinks, well, it's just going to shrink. So there's no tension of the bowl like pushing against the surface. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use this one. Can I have some saran wrap? Yes, you can. Bar, bar. Okay, I see All right, so my next one. Um, <laughs> you can't do it. All right. You need it? Nope, I don't need it. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of gonna do. <clears throat> I'm kind of gonna do a uh, steampunk steampunk kind of bowl. Um, what is a steampunk bowl? So steampunk, you know what steampunk is or you don't know what steampunk is? I do is? know what steampunk okay. is. So I'm so, kind of confused on how that works out into a bowl. All right. Well, steampunk is like all kinds of machinery kind of stuff, like stuck together to make mm -hmm. a thing. So I'm going to fake the machine. Oh, how okay. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad you asked. Okay. <laughs> right. It's okay. Uh, so. <laughs> All right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going, you're making coils, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to make little flat pieces. 
and then I'm going to screw them all together. Like with a real screw? Sure, why not? No, not really. Um, so I'm I'm imagining that in my in my mind's mind my mind's eye, I spy with my little eye a like like let's say for instance there's some really weird virus that hits the earth <laughs> and we're all stuck but we can't go to the store okay mm. so we have to make our own stuff and it just so happens that in the garage we have a bunch of metal sheets or maybe we don't maybe we have quarters <clears throat> and we have a hammer and we're able to hammer the quarters okay okay so this, is a, this would be a big quarter <laughs> to hammer <laughs> but um so what if we hammer all these quarters together and we make we start making this really kind of haphazard kind of thing that gets put together but we got to make sure that it doesn't leak right mm -hmm. well, so depends if that's what they want if right they want it, to it leak. could leak right functional at all yeah okay so what i might do is um I, I could make these these are very organic edges right now I could make them like like uh, geometric edges, so I could cut these maybe with the knife that I took out of the kitchen drawer. Um, after asking. After. I didn't ask. <laughs> I just did it. Um, I know. But uh, you guys ask. You guys ask. Um, but these are like really organic. So, um, but we gotta we gotta screw them together. So, to screw them together, we need we need to make a screw. And look, here's a screwdriver. So if we go like that, now I've made a screw. Mm. Okay, it's a button head screw. That's true. Button head screw, yeah. So I could kind of go like this and just keep. You know, I didn't say if you don't have water, what is there something you? What if you don't have water? You don't have a <laughs> You're not supposed to teach kids to lick clay. Oh. You're not supposed to eat dirt. Maybe if we ate more dirt, viruses wouldn't get us. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> he also says the woman who licks rocks. So. That's right. It's not <laughs> weird. Like, she licks rocks. She licks a rock. He's not kidding. That's how I know what type of rock they are. But a lot of rock hounds do it. What? Rock hounds? Rock hounds, yes. Is that like we have German short hairs? We do. Are they actual dog hounds or are they? No, they're rock hounds. So rock hounds. Yeah, they hunt for specific rocks on specific beaches. Dogs hunt for rocks? No, dogs hunt for everything. Even bring <laughs> possums into the house. What happened? Okay. Okay. So, Marie, did you have another thing to show them? I do. Okay. So, <clears throat> while I'm working on this, maybe you can work on that too. We don't want to make this a half hour long, but I, this feels like it's going to be a half an hour long. Okay. So, I know you guys are used to using slabs at school. We have a slab roller. Yeah, with a slab roller. But how many of you can make a slab with not having a roller? There's lots of different techniques. Um, one using a rolling pin. I have, oh, well, like a you have new pin. stuff. I, do I? You have new stuff. Do, do, do. You're outside of the camera view. I know, because I had to go get the rolling pin. So, if you have a wooden rolling pin, once again, ask to use it. Or you could maybe be at Goodwill. Yeah. Somebody somebody wear a face mask and go out to Goodwill. And yeah, because there's a lot of them. I was just there the other day. 
Um, if you have a plastic one, wrap newspaper on it. Once again, it will stick. Um, but you just roll it out to make your slab flat. You can use the rolling pins. But let's see what else we can use to do that. Same hey, we thing. got a lot of Clorox wipes. We let's use those. Um, I'm not sure. Here, let's use that clay over there. You, oh, you want me to try it with Yeah, a try new, with a new one. A new one? Yeah. So first, I have to pound it down. Because it's a little thick. Sorry, that's probably really loud. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work. He's kind of squishy. He is empty. And he doesn't work. Because he collapses because he is completely empty and too flimsy. So that needs right. to go in the garbage. That's in the garbage. All right. Perfect. All right. So what else can we use? Um, I don't know. Well, how about a can? Can of hairspray? Mm-hmm. Right. No, should we we would normally wrap that, right? Yes, yeah. we would. Okay. Does that look good? It does work. Nice. So you just use it like a rolling pin and just push it across. Make sure it's pushed on evenly. Yeah, this is hard to do when you're sitting down. Right. It would right, probably, right. probably work a whole lot easier mm -hmm. to stand up to Get do your this. Body weight over the top of it. Mm-hmm. So, what if we don't have a can of hairspray now? Who doesn't have hairspray? Come on. I know, but, you know, there's some people. I got some WD-40 over there. WD-40? can of WD-40. So, well, what about any, just any old can, Candy. right? Yep. Can. Oh, you opened your soda can, so I can't I use that. I did open that. my soda can. No, that, no, I thought no, that no, was no. down here for my example. No, no, no that's, that's my for being thirsty. <laughs> Did you talk a lot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but all right. So what the hell are you gonna do with this? Uh, this this slab? slab? Here? Yeah. What's what are you gonna do with it? This one is getting stiffer. Yeah. It is. Okay. So we can once again do a, an outside of the bowl again. Or let's try the inside of a cereal bowl. <clears throat> so we're gonna try Do not try this with cereal in the bowl. Yes. That would be gross. We get our saran wrap. Push it all down in there nice and flat. If you need to, you can take to the edges of the saran wrap, but that's just an extra shot that I think is not necessary. And this is another one that I just used the hairspray can on because it's a little wet or clay. <coughs> and you can just lay it on top, and then you kind of have to like work your way down. So you just can't push in it, right? No. It's a little rip. Yep. So it's okay. hard to do and run and see at the same time. You want to hold my bowl for a minute? Okay. Can you leave it tipped up? I Thanks. can leave it tipped up, yeah. So I lifted up the one side and kind of worked it and pushed it down into it. So therefore, it's not going to rip. If I would have just pushed straight in the center, I would have um, got a thin spot. We want it to all stay the same thickness. What Did about you? these areas over here that don't have any clay? Well, that's because I didn't measure it correctly. Oh, measuring is important. Ba, ba, ba. Yes, measuring is important. So that just means I'm going to make my bowl a little differently. So I'm going to move it over to make it even. So by no means, right, does a bowl necessarily have to have a specific type of shape. No. Right? Not at all. <clears throat> it doesn't. Be boring. It doesn't need to be just round. Like it doesn't have to be just round. We can make a bowl like that. That's a triangle bowl, right? Mm -hmm. It's got three sides, so a triangle bowl. 
um, we, we can make it however. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use the cheese cutter. Really? Yes, I am, so they can see how to do it. You did not show them. What was I supposed to show them? You just showed them that you, you had it down here and that you used it earlier. Yeah, but I could rewind the video and see what I did. That's true. Did, did you actually use it on the clip? I, I did. Know. Oh. I did. Oh, I missed that. It's uh, sneaky. So I'm going to trim these pieces off. So if you use a cheese slicer, you're going to get a really nice... Oh, I'm not. Not you yet. You should get a nice... <laughs> not yet, because it's too thick. It's too tall. So oh, so we, we still got to work it a little bit. Yeah, I got to okay. work it a little bit, because the clay <laughs> is too tall. See, Holy experiences. Holy. I should have used the knife first, because the clay was too tall. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'm going to show you a little bit about my steampunk bowl here. Oh! Oh! I dropped it right onto the monitor, right onto the computer. So, um, you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, we've got these little plates and they're, they're screws holding everything together. And by the time I'm done, I'm sure it's gonna be just a big old mess, but it'll be fun, right? So that's important. So, now that I've cleaned up my edges and have my funky shape that is not completely round. Hey, just like in class, if you are working and you want your clay to um, stiffen up faster, you can use a fan. Right? Uh, you can use a hair dryer. <clears throat> yep. You can ask your dad to explain something and he'll just keep talking, 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 mm -hmm. and that would just maybe blow a bunch of hot air on it and that would be just fine. Um, what else? That's about it. Anything mm -hmm. that blows, blows air would be fine. I think I want to use your your stiff slab over there. Because I've got an idea for this little bowl. Ooh. It's stiff slab. So could I borrow that slab? Yep. Slab of you know slab of In So now that this one I've kind of put in like this. But now what are some other things that we can use for texture? Because I went through the house and grabbed a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, well, I see you got a toilet paper roll there. What's that for? <laughs> toilet paper roll, because we all know that we have a bunch of these lying around in the garbage cans or not. and in the bathroom. Yeah, or not, if someone didn't make it to the store soon enough. Because right now you'll pay an arm and a leg for, you know, six rolls of toilet paper if you can find them. Yeah. But you can use this and just to make textures of little circles everywhere, layer them, whatever kind of design you want. You can do this on the outside of your bowls, inside. Um, another one I use is, okay, so now I have all these big circles. Now I want little circles up here by the rim. So I'm gonna just use a straw. You're not gonna push it all the way down. You're just making it to make the design. You do not wanna go all the way through or you do because you want to put complete holes in them to make a fruit bowl. A fruit bowl. A fruit bowl. Fruit bowls have holes. They do. And your mom and grandmothers usually love fruit bowls. I know my grandma does. Tossing it. Tossing? Tossed it. <clears throat> Don't throw clay at home, kids. Right. Um, at least not that slap. Okay. So I'm going, this is a little, it's a little thin on this side, a little thick on this side. 
Uh, so I'm going to thin it out just a little bit more. And by doing that, I'm going to slap it onto the table. You see it's starting to elongate and spread out. So it's kind of like you're you're making the clay kind of touch and then and then hit and kind of slide. If you can do that, this is this is like it's awesome. If you can't do that, you're just gonna be frustrated. Almost like making pizza crust. Almost, yeah. yeah I guess how, they, how they stretch pizza, you know? Okay. What else you got going on there? You um, got the Olympic rings in there. I do. Hmm. Playing. Okay. Let's see. What, what about all this, this stuff? stuff? That stuff? No, I'm running out of room to put what stuff. Is this? Ooh, all my. I'm going to also use this just to show different textures. So, this here is just scrap lace. Um, you can lay it onto your clay. Once again, take your can of whatever to use as your roller. And you just roll on top of it compressing the, the lace into the clay. Oh, I'm going to have to get really close to this. Yeah, that's really pretty. Light. That's really small. Huh? I don't know if you can see that, but he's really light. Let me put the light a little bit. There, like Ooh, that. Yeah, there. there huh? You can so, show the lace on that one. We use doilies in class. Maybe okay. Because I, I stole some from us and I took them. <gasps> you guys have my doilies? I hope you're putting them to good use because I love them here. I like to put them on my coffee cups. Actually, I think I think they're the ones that I got from. Oh, from your mom? My parents when they're moving from. Their so they house. already know what doilies look like then. <clears throat> yeah, they've, they've used them. They think they're kind of cool. Oh. Or at least they just appease me or something. I don't know. <laughs> Another thing, because I'm a rock hound, I have lots of different rocks. This one is actually uh, coral, not a specific rock, but um, but rocks and coral and just anything with really good texture on it itself. When you push it into clay and just roll it around, it makes amazing texture. Wow, that is cool. Isn't it? Yeah. This one reminds me of a brain. Yeah, kind of. Digging it. Totally digging it. So this is what this looks like. Pretty cool. But you could use other things too, right? Like, uh, like a spring or mm -hmm. nuts and bolts. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Toothbrushes. Toothbrushes, pine cones. Who's that? Um, meat tenderizer. Meat tender. Oh, that's my favorite. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They've probably seen you use this in class. I don't know if I have or not. But I like the meat tenderizer. I'll play, I'll play it here. I like to go like that, really kind of go so that there's a, a lot. And then I like to get my finger in behind it and I like to stretch that out so that it becomes something different. Than just that that pattern for the meat tenderizer, and that's kind of fun. So it almost makes it look like a bubble that pops out. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. Mm. See, what are some of the other things I like to use? Hmm. Stamps. I use a lot of stamps. Stamps. I like stamps like, um, like rubber stamps. Yep, like rubber kid stamps. <laughs> if you have a younger sibling or your parent. Cookie cutters. Yep, cookie cutters. Yeah. But yeah, if your mom does scrapbooking. Oh she yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. has really fun things in there. Um, buttons. Ooh, what oh, what a buttons. Yeah. Buttons. Oh, some of the ass and the old buttons are. Really um, another thing that you used to do at the bottom of your shoe. The bottom of your shoe, yeah. They all have texture. What about the placemat or the mat that's down there? I think this. Uh, I love them. 
called. So I used to have a car mat. I'm sure we still have it somewhere, but the car mat from uh, the back passenger side of uh, my 1996 Plymouth something or another blue convertible thingy. And uh, the mat had like a bunch of like little tiki thingies that come down so that uh, it holds it into the carpet. And that was a lot of fun to just press in and then kind of do that slap method and things would like stretch out and elongate and be kind of crazy. So anything like that, like you could do the same thing with your shoe, like Marie, Marie mentioned, you could, you could do the shoe. Um, I don't know if you noticed, I, I put a top, like I just, I just put a whole top on this thing. Um, and I use the cheese slicer to kind of trim up so that it's kind of even. And then I'm going to use my finger on all the seams to clean those up. So yeah, I made a bowl, but my bowl has a lid on it, which means I could probably use it for something else. Now, if you do the inside of a bowl like this one here. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. You hear that tap, 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 tap? That's our dogs playing right above our heads. So, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> don't you know we're videotaping here? Hello. Yeah, normally they're down here with me when I'm in the studio. They have their own little dog cushions. And um, if we're throwing on the wheel, our one dog likes to lick the clay as it spins or nudge our elbows, which definitely throws your cylinders off. Um, yeah, so, but they enjoy it down here. But what I was gonna say was, if they're doing the inside bowl, they will not be able to put a foot on it. You could though. You just have to wait for it to stiffen up so that it, it's like a stiff leather hardware, it, it'll support itself. Right. And then you can turn it over, and then you can put a foot on it as long as you slip and score. So or water, water and score around. Then you could then you could put a foot ring on. Um, then you'd be okay. What are we gonna score with? I don't. Know, I use the fork. Um, okay. you do that. I, th I think there's any any like a, you could use a needle, sewing needle, or um, toothpicks. Toothpicks. Put a bundle of toothpicks together and uh, tape them together or something like that. You got all those little toothpicky things, you know, the, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That would work. That'd work. Okay. So I got to finish. I got to finish my bowl. We're getting a little long on time. Um, and I want to hear like their scavenger hunt ideas. Like what do they find? I think that, yeah. that would be really cool and interesting. All right. We can do that. We'll put that out there. Um, I'm always up for new ideas. I'm totally cheating here. I'm grabbing a needle tool. <laughs> but I could oh, use a real needle, right? You could use a real needle. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lidded form. So I'm going to hold my needle at an angle like this. And I'm going to I'm gonna poke it through. And then I'm just going to make some kind of a pattern of a cut. I'm not trying to make a straight cut because if you make a straight cut, your stuff will fall apart. So couldn't I have used like the butter knife to do that? Well, yes, but the butter knife just doesn't make it around, doesn't make the round turns as, as easy as a needle to it. And let go. Okay. So you can see it's got an angle cut in there and the lid has an angle cut on it. So which means that once this stiffens up, it can only go this way. Almost like a pumpkin top. Like a pumpkin top. Yeah, like a pumpkin top. We make it a pumpkin top. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and then, you know, so there, there's my covered jar, right? I can put my salt in there and, and cook with it, um, do whatever. So anywho, um, do you have anything to add? 
for these guys? Mm, no, but you have a bunch. I must be answered. Yes. What? You have other ideas over there. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, marker. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a marker. Look, remember, we were talking about, like, <clears throat> not a, we weren't talking about coffee. We were talking about, like, what to use as texture. So I got one of these big manga, manga, Magnum 44 permanent marker that everybody likes to smell. Um, so, mm -hmm. like, you can use the tip, you know, and that would create that kind of texture right there. That's kind of cool. Um, I've got a bottle of ibuprofen uh, and the lid on it. I get that off. The lid has all these ridges, right, like that. So that's kind of cool. Look at that. So I can create, I don't know, some kind of like, ooh, there, there's my there's my tank, my steampunk tank. I could use that over there somewhere on that stuff. Um, I've got my daily vitamins, uh, sent from silver because I'm old. <laughs> They're not silver. Um, but it has a different type of, but, but yet still very similar to the other one, um, to the, to the ibuprofen one. So there, there's some, some interesting, okay, I don't know if you can see it. Um, uh, but think about things like that. So anything that has, um, you know, lids, lids to them, a lot of times they're textured. Your soda bottle lid uh, will have a texture to it. Um, your, your, your drugs. <laughs> I've got a coring tool, right? That's for fruit or something like that. Um, I could I could make you know you know holes. Like once this stiffens up, I could cut holes through that if I wanted to. I got a USB, a wooden USB from uh, the school store uh, from before, and that that kind of makes a really interesting. I could use it as an interesting pattern, you know, on my clay. So anything like that. Um, have fun. Um, be in touch. My email is always open. Um, if you'd rather talk to Marie than me, then that's okay too. <laughs> just just say uh, just put Marie in the email heading. Uh, I want to talk to somebody who knows. That would be her. Um, <laughs> Not always. And, um, yeah, stay safe. Uh, again, um, four bowls, um, surface development, texture, be creative. Um, there is the research, if you haven't finished the research up, with uh, three artists, <coughs> three artists and uh, two images each of their work. Um, and then some of your own, like what I think it was 15, 15 of the um, images that you found online um, that pertain to bowls that you thought was really interesting. Um, make sure that's in a Google Doc and drop that in on Google Classroom. And um, yeah, and then just a reminder for that first virtual day uh, video from the Milwaukee Bucks uh, and the little thing like that. So. Remember, you got to do those, otherwise you're marked absent. And if you're marked absent too much, then uh, Principal Dowden makes a personal phone call to your parents. I don't know. That's, that's, that's what they're doing. So I don't know what the heck's going on. Um, four bowls, surface development, texture, be creative, Monday the 6th. Okay, Monday the 6th. And that's it. you have anything? Okay.